Well, howdy there, folks. This is a super short video about GANs. What is a GAN? What do the GAN? Now, you see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. The GANs were thought up by this funny man with a funny hat. Um, Ian Goodfellow, it was just this guy who was at the bar with his friends late at night getting tipsy, and his friends did not believe him that he could create this, uh, an AI that generates pictures. So whilst a little bit tipsy, he went home and made it. Just this guy, a single human being. Basically, basically, it's, it's very simple. You have a generator, which is making stuff. It's making these pictures. And then you have a discriminator, which is trying to tell if those um, pictures it's re it is receiving are real or if they're fake and generated by our um, our little generator thing. Said another way, you basically got the Joker who's thinking up stuff. He's creating some some fancy pictures and whatnot. And then you have the Sherlock Holmes sort of detective kind of guy who's trying to tell what the nefarious fellow is up to. Um, we also have John Travolta and Enola Holmes as a separate um, example of this. The problem, why why are we scared about this? Is this different than Photoshop at all? Um, yes, and as uh, we will see um, in a very recent paper from OpenAI, um, that this stuff does scale, and that um, you know you can sort of create infinite fake news um, or pseudo real news and that this is uh here it's now and it's scary so um we have a clip on dan carlin which you can see in the full video if you'd like to basically uh you know anything that can happen will happen and especially now that this stuff is so cheap and accessible the uh sort of nuclear weapons are in the hands of the masses type of example um why is this so scary fake news isn't new, propaganda is not new, um, echo chambers and the like. Well, imagine if you had, um, you know, sort of the horrors of this is Arch, Franz Archduke Ferdinand of Hungary, whatever the guy who died and sort of um, catalyzed the beginning of World War One. And here we have George Floyd who catalyzed whatever the um, things that happened this year in the USA and globally even. Um, and Imagine if neither of those events actually happened, they did, but if they were um, generated by a computer and uh, proposed, you know, to the, to the world at large that they were real. We can now do that with generative adversarial networks, GANs. So, we are trying to tell, we received some video, image, audio file, whatever, and we want to know, is it real? Um, and typically... You can just look at it and tell, but with this new stuff, it's so realistic you can't tell. So what do you got to do? Well, one option is cybersecurity, basically trust the source. I don't think that's realistic. I have no to little faith in that method. Um, not so much on like the encryption and you know, the actual security aspect, but more on the source. I don't trust the source. I don't trust... We're not doing trust. Trust is a shitty way to, to live your life. So detection, we want to be able to detect for ourselves from first principles, um, if uh, if the information we're receiving is from a legitimate, um, you know, if it's a real representation of something that happened in the world from a camera, or if it's the hallucinogenic mad ravings of an artificial general intelligence, general being a fuzzy term. Um, there's a paper, we get relatively deep in the weeds in the longer version of this video, but this is the short version where I'm talking quickly. Basically, we all have little fingerprints. We have signatures and these sorts of things, and they're tiny little tells as to our character. And the theory is that these neural networks that are creating these images have these little fingerprints. And if we can sort of hone in on those, we can use those to figure out not only is this real or is this fake, but which architecture, you know, sort of which AI made this thing pretty freaking sick here's kind of an example of you can see there's kind of a diagonal this this way yeah there we go it's inverted so it's a little hard to do um basically yes that information does exist and it can be used to determine whether or not these images are fake or real 
kind of. Here are some examples of the images. Um, these are fake. None of these are real. None of these are real. And uh, the bottom section has tiny little changes, but not, um, you know, super crazy. Just as a reference point, these are the real pictures. These are real celebrities who I should probably know who they are. I don't. Um, but you're also extremely low resolution. So, the details. None of this matters. Behold this number here. These numbers do matter. 99%, 98.5%. Basically, you get an image from a source. You don't trust the source, but you have this image. And you can tell with 99% accuracy, yes, this is real. Or no, this is fake. That's insane. That's amazing. However, and this is the big fat chunky however, um, these numbers drop significantly, uh, way down to like 8%, which is less than, you know, so it's either real or it's fake, 50%, right? Coin flip, heads or tails. Um, and this is, this is less than that. This is 8% <laughs> um, after sort of there is an attack. And you can do some other stuff to bring it up a little bit, um, quite a bit, but um, even with the best sort of, if somebody attacks you, not even that intelligently, but, but a little bit, um, you can only get up to 70%. You know, if there's only 70% confidence that sort of a George Floyd 2.0 type situation happened, um, and we're only 70% confident that it's real, 30% confident that we don't really know, that's, that's not okay. That's not a stable solution. Um, also of note, these attacks are not that robust. If they were robust, if they were learned attacks, things get, you know, we don't have information on that, but I'm guessing it's horrifying. All right, um, so here's my opinion. Hello, me, my opinion. Um, this this isn't going to work, this kind of method of, oh, well, there's a little tell. There's a little fingerprint. There's a little thing. It's going to work in the short term, and it will always work in the short term, but it's always going to be one step behind, like on our little slowpoke friend here. And the reason for that, in my opinion, um, based on math and, and things, is that it's a zero-sum game structure, right? We have the generator and we have the discriminator. We have our Joker and we have our Sherlock Holmes and they're always at odds. And the key component here is that the generator is always um, one time step, always sort of entangled with itself and other math bullshit doesn't matter. Uh, but it's always sort of separate. It's always a little bit ahead. And so the zero-sum game will also come down to like money and stuff because this stuff is like getting very expensive literally um gpt3 costs like four million dollars just the computing time so that's pretty crazy um yeah zero sum game very scary what's my opinion on the solution i don't think it's the you know let's find that little bitty tell i think it's an out of context solution um you know at the, at the same time we have to do the best with what we have so this kind of research is mwah, masterpiece for your wallet um, so research like this and in this general direction of trying to stay one step ahead, even though you never, you know, officially can. Um, but I'm guessing that there's also sort of an out of context solution that sort of addresses the zero sum game, you know, adversarial component in a different way. That's my hope. And I will continue to do my own thinking on it. These human beings, these, the, these human beings who I will not, uh, attempt to pronounce, publish this paper, and did a fan for fantastic job about it. Thank you to them. And here's a paper I said I was going to talk about, and I read it, and I just, I just don't think we're going to. It's very interesting. It's very important. And there's other stuff I think is more pertinent to talk about, so we're going to do that. All right. Goodbye. Thank you.